Hello again, I'm Michael Fudge, and you're with me again for the second in our four-part series on the data definition and data manipulation languages of SQL. In the first video, we took a look at the create table and the insert commands. And now we're going to look at the alter table command so that we can add data integrity constraints to tables that already exist. Then we will actually check those constraints and see how they work um, in the third part of the video when we introduce insert and update. So let's get started with the alter table statement and get going with our code. Okay, we're back here in our spiffy lube example. And you can see where we left off. We have two tables, customers and vehicles. And we have some primary keys set on those tables. But we do not have any data integrity constraints. Oh, you know what? It looks like I forgot to set a primary key on the vehicles table. I better do that. So this does bring up an interesting point. Could I use the alter table statement to add that? Yes, but as a convention, I like to keep that constraint with the table creation itself. By the way, I, I noticed that, whoops, I can't highlight it. I gotta run the whole thing. I noticed that because when I went down here to keys, I saw a key for customers, but I didn't see one for vehicles. And so now I have one and if I refresh, it's there. Okay, so now back on to what I was getting to originally, which is we would like to add some constraints to these tables, and we could do it a couple ways. We can we can add the constraints with to the create table and rerun the scripts, or we can learn to get comfortable with the alter table statement. And I'm going to choose the latter to get comfortable using the alter table statement to manipulate my tables. And I'm actually going to take it a step further and I'm going to remove this customer ID column from the vehicles table. There's no data in it anyway as a way to show you how to add a column to a table as well. I actually could show you how to alter the table and drop the column if, if we wanted to do that too. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do that both. Okay. So now we're into part two. So let's do this first. Let's alter this vehicles table and drop this column just to show you what that looks like. Let's alter table vehicles and then let's drop column. I don't think I need to say column. I think I could just say the name of the column. And in this case, it's customer ID. Let's see what we get. And a way of checking this will be to run it. Up oh, and see it says drop and it says not a constraint. So I need a column. I always forget whether I need it or not need it. Okay, so that works. And if I go back here to vehicles and look at the columns and refresh, you'll see that it's not there anymore. It's not there. Now let's do something foolish and add it back in. Alter table vehicles, add column, customer ID, int not null. Now it's funny, now it complains about column and you don't need the word column here when you add. I know, I know, I don't make the rules, I just um, explain them to you. So it's also saying failed because customer ID does not exist, right? So I can't drop it because it's already there. So like, how do you do a drop if doesn't exist? Well, that's something we're gonna have to get to a little later on, we're not ready for that. But we will be ready for that. So it should work now because I did both. Let me see. Okay, so it doesn't work. Let me let me um, add the column. Okay. It says uh, only allows to be added when it contains nulls or has a default definition. But I, I'm, oh, I have not null. I need to say null here. Because if I say not null, I need a value. Okay, so that alters and adds it. 
so now I can run this ad nauseum because I'm dropping it and adding it, dropping it, in, which is rather silly, uh, by the way. Let's do something more interesting. Let's add data integrity constraints. Let's add a unique constraint on the VIN so that no two VINs can be, no two same VINs could be inserted into the table. Alter table vehicles. Let's add constraint. And I like to start my u unique constraints with a U. So this is going to be U vehicles VIN. VIN. And it's going to be a unique constraint over the VIN. And then let's alter. You might be saying, can you alter a whole bunch of things and add a bunch of things at once? Not really, okay? Your mileage is going to vary by database management system. Therefore, you should just get in the business of assuming that you can't do it, okay? Again, we're, my goal here is to teach you SQL with a real DBMS, but not teach you the Microsoft way of doing it where possible because that's the DBMS we're using. And so one of the things that I emphasize is, you know, just keep your alter table statements simple, because this is one of the things where it sort of deviates depending on if you're using Postgres or MariaDB or Oracle or Microsoft, they all do it a little differently. So you're better off just sticking to one manipulation per alter statement. What else do I want to add? I want to add a check constraint to the mileage to make sure you don't enter a mileage that's um, less than zero. So that's going to look like this. Alter table vehicles. Add constraint CK vehicles. Mileage greater than or equal to zero. I like to write out exactly what my, if I could spell mileage, I like to write out exactly what my constraint will do. And I'm going to show you why quickly here. I guess maybe I should show you, um, I could show you why with an insert statement here, but um, I'll show you why with an update in the next video. So let's add that constraint and then it's gonna be a check constraint and we want the mileage to be bigger than or equal to zero. That's a condition that must be true before you write data to my table, okay? Let's give that a run, okay, that seems to work. Now let's insert into vehicles and let's go grab an insert that we already did like this one here. Let's test our constraints. This is why naming your constraints is so important. And let's uh, add the same VIN and let's call it a Subaru Forester. And watch what happens. You violated a unique key constraint called U vehicles VIN. Cannot insert duplicate, duplicate key in object DBO vehicles. There you go, right? So that's our constraint firing. This is one of the things that we love about relational databases is that they have data integrity constraints, which forces a schema and a set of rules. So the schema gives us the physical domain, like that should be ver that should be an, a number, that should be characters. Our data integrity constraints give us our logical domain, like what makes sense to be added. It doesn't make sense to have two vehicles with the same vent. That's a problem, okay? Let's trigger the other constraint. So let's change this one to like, I don't know, one four A, so it's not gonna have a problem there. And then I'm gonna make the mileage negative 100. And this should fire the other constraint. The insert statement conflicted with check constraint. CK vehicles mileage greater than or equal to zero. That's why I like to give it a nice long name so that you know when you see that error, what happened, right? If you just give it a default, if you say add constraint and don't give it a name, the system picks a name and it's going to be some name you're not going to recognize. Just going to be some randomly generated gibberish, which is no good. 
you want that there. So I'm going to um, save this so you have it in case you want to fool around with it. Save it in the code, but I'm not going to run that anymore. Let's add our constraint to the customer's table, a unique constraint on email. Alter table customers add add constraint. A good name for this constraint is you customers email. You for unique constraint, customers for the table, email for the column in the table. And it's a unique constraint on email. Okay. Now for the coup de, the coup de gras. I want to add a foreign key constraint. The way foreign key constraints work, and let's see if I can squeeze it all on the, on the page, is you add a constraint to this column that says the values I put in customer ID must be primary key values in the referring table. So in this case, our referring table is going to be the customer's table. So I want to add a rule that says on vehicles, add a constraint to this column. Okay, let's see if we can go that far. So I'm going to alter table vehicles. I'm going to make a comment here. This is the foreign key constraint. This is the one that confuses everybody. You're going to alter table vehicles and then add a constraint. Okay, and the name of the constraint is going to be FK. And then what's the name of the, the table? Vehicles. And then what's the column name I want to add the constraint to? Customer ID. What kind of constraint it is? It's not a check constraint. It's not a unique constraint. It is a foreign key constraint. Okay. Now, which column is that foreign key constraint on? It's on the customer ID column. What other table does it refer to? It refers to the customer's I got to say references, the customer's table. What column in the customer table does it refer to? It always refers to the primary key, which is customer ID. Oh, it's not customer ID, it's just ID. So, take a breath. Let's take a look at this again. So I'm adding a constraint to this that says, if you write a value to this column, it must match a value that comes from this tables column. So I cannot write, let me see if it works. Okay, it works. So now if I want to put a customer ID in here, it has to be one of these customer IDs, one, two, or three. I can't add customer ID seven or four or nine. I can't do that. Referential integrity enforces that. Okay. That's the purpose of referential integrity is it is a logical um, domain tool that we use to guarantee that the, d the data that is within a column exists in another table. So that is part two. Now in the third part, we will learn how to update data within the tables. And we'll also go ahead and update these um, this customer ID column and, and make sure it matches up with these customers over here so that we know who owns which of these cars that they took to Spiffy Lube. Okay, see you in a bit.